over 90% of Niger's cattle production is in the north. Yet, half of beef demand is in the south, with the difference between the two regions being above 1,000 kilometers. Now, given the economic cost of transport, uh, processing may be best located to production hubs and demand centers since the live cattle are more costly to transport than beef. It is a statement that pretty much summarizes the circumstances surrounding the current angry exchanges about herdsmen and their havoc they are bringing to farmlands in the southern parts of the country. But for a discussion around how cattle rearing can become a veritable source of utilizing dormant land resources and making lots of money to both, uh, we are now being joined by Tilewa Adebajo, Chief Executive Officer at CFG Advisory. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Tilly, good morning. Good morning, Ruben. Yeah, but I'm just seeing you uh, first time in the year. I know you and I, we have an, uh, an outstanding or resolved matter. My apologies. But quickly, how do we deal with this livestock value chain, particularly with regard to uh, cattle rearing? Uh, the federal government talks about livestock transformation uh, plan, but all of that has been reduced to cattle rearing, cattle grazing, and that has caused very big problem. You are an economist. Uh, how do we communicate the fact that, look, cattle rearing is a business and that we can have a value chain that is of uh, greater value uh, than the conflicts, the violence that we see around, you know, uh, cattle rearers and farmers? Thank you very much, uh, Ruben, and uh, good morning and a happy new year. Well, it is rather unfortunate because um, we're dealing with an industry that is a multi-billion dollar business. Um, we all know that agriculture constitutes about 23% of our GDP. Uh, and if you take a look at the value of that GDP, GDP now, of, on a GDP of about uh, 400 billion, that's close to about maybe 80, um, you know, a significant amount um, and the cattle side of it in itself is quite significant. Uh, in Lagos alone, we slaughter over 10,000 head of cattle a day. Uh, if you take a look at an average cost of about 200,000 naira, you're looking at uh, a business that is worth close to 2 billion naira a day in Lagos alone on just slaughter. Um, so it's a pretty significant business that we need to regulate and we need to control properly and put in the proper structures. Right now, there's so much fragmentation in that business um, and there's not, no regulation. And I think that is what is causing the problem. Uh, within Lagos, you find some regulation in the sense that you now find out that they have meat vans. Uh, you, there's a central slaughter house in Okuaba where you slaughter cattle. And from that central slaughter place, you have dedicated meat vans, they call eco meat van, that takes beef from the abattoir to the markets. So there's a bit of regulation probably at the end of the value chain towards the butchers, but we need to look at an integrated value chain because this is a significant amount uh, of, of, um, of money uh, and agriculture is a significant part of our GDP which is close to about $80 billion and um, it's not play. Great. So there are those who are proposing beef special processing zones in the southwest since the demand for beef is high in this part of the country. But let's talk about risk and investment. How enticing is this for investors and um, the infrastructure needed to keep such zones operational? Um, how realistic is this and is it doable? Whenever people ask that question, I always want us to take things from a historical perspective. Um, since we also have to understand that, you know, this is 2021. We are no longer hunter and gatherer societies um, and we have a population of 180 million that we need to cater for. Um, let us step back a little bit and let's take a look at when we had regions. For instance, in the northern region, there's a region called Funtua. I don't know if you've been there, but Funtua is a cotton belt where we, the, we grow a significant amount of cotton, which we used to export a lot and still do, and you have a lot of gin, gineries and cotton mills there. Um, in Kano, for instance, we had the granite pyramids, um, which have disappeared now. 
You see, in those zones which you have cash crops, and also in the western region, then with the cocoa and the corn and all the areas of cash crops, you cannot have grazing in those sort of areas. And a place like in the Benue state, which is the middle belt of the country and the breadbasket where there's intensive farming, you can have that. So a long time ago, way back in the 50s, and we already put out laws that are quite defined as to how we need to regulate our cattle industry because they cannot destroy cash crops. We need to go back to that. At a point in time before, cattle was actually being uh, uh, put on train wagons and brought to the south. Um, you, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't walk cattle to the south. Okay. You you put them on trains. Mr. Adebayo, I'm sorry to interrupt your flow of thought, but we have to go on a quick commercial break. We'll be right back to talk some more. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. You're watching your eyes morning show. Well, we still have Tilewa Adebajo, who's the chief executive officer at CFG Advisory with us. Thank you so much for staying with us. If you could just round up on your point, because uh, you were speaking to my question about the establishment of this beef processing hubs or zones in the southwest, the investment risks uh, and infrastructure um, you know, involved. Well, let's just say in summary that um, we had these structures in place before, and uh, the beef processing zones, like I've said, are just a way to modernize those existing structures uh, to be able to create a value chain, a regulation that will make it attractive for investors to come in uh, to put money into this business because it is a viable business. We have a teeming population, but it needs to be done right and we can secure the right investments. For instance, uh, Brazil um, exports close to $8 billion worth of beef annually. That is a quarter of our foreign uh, reserves of about $35 uh, billion. Right. I mean, great point you made. And I was really, I had a lot of glee in my eyes when you talked about the fact that we used to have trains uh, and wagon trains carry cattle. I mean, I remember those videos, you know, made by the colonial government back in the days. Of, I think it was UAC precisely that carry all of this, you know, uh, cattle in the wagons and send them down to the south from Kanu when they realized we're still working. These were the good old days. These were the days where we had, oh, Budu Kachu Ranch. Nobody talks about a Budu Kachu Ranch again. What is happening to ranching? If in the 50s, we could all come together and consensually set up a Budukatu ranch. What is happening to ranching? Because you're talking about Brazil, you're talking about Argentina, with a lot of beef. They have ranches. Yes, we also do have ranches. And even in the Southwest, we have a, uh, the first ranches in the Southwest were set up by the colonial government in the 1940s. Uh, the Western Region government uh, took them over around the 1950s. Um, in Fashola, in Oyo State, that still exists there. And that was the main breeding center, and they had ranches all over, um, all over the southwest, including what is now Okwaba in Agege, where the abattoir is. Um, so those structures are still in place. And what we're saying now is that let us upgrade these structures, uh, let us put in the right regulatory framework, put in the right studies in place, and let the private sector invest in these ranches. Not only do we have Obudu uh, Cattle Ranch, uh, we also have Mambila. Mambila Plateau is also an excellent uh, location uh, that can take an extensive uh, amount of cattle. And also the Sambisa uh, Reserve is also very strategic for that purpose. So we do have the infrastructure and we do have the land, but we need to put it in the right framework and we need to develop the proper value chain. Well, very quickly, I mean, we've been talking business. Uh, let's talk about the politics of it. There's been a lot of ethnicization of the uh, cattle business in Nigeria, ethnic labeling, uh, all of that resulting in uh, security problems. Uh, there are persons from the northern part of the country who insist that there should be a cattle ranch uh, in every state in Nigeria or in every community in Nigeria. And then you have people with primordial attachment uh, to land insisting that, no, the Fulanese who are attached to a uh, cattle rearing, cattle business, they should rear their cattle in their own part of the country. And what we can get from the South is just beef. Now, what are your thoughts on the uh, federal government's uh, National Livestock Transformation Plan 
and this ethnic uh, religious politics around the cattle business in Nigeria. Okay. Thank you very much. I think uh, Pastor Bakari, I think, has answered some of those questions, I think, in his last uh, and the previous uh, guest. And I think he talked about property rights. Um, it's very important that we, you can have open grazing in a modern society, and I think that is very clear. Um, so the production of beef right now is done, I think, as Rufai had said, you have to look at ranches. There is a new way to do things. And most of these herdsmen can actually work within the, um, within the, ran within the reserves, the grazing reserves that are specified. And when they want to sell their cattle, they can move them to the markets. So there, there, are, there are issues that I think are pretty clear, that because if you move cattle on other people's land, then you're trespassing and you're breaking the law. The problem we have now is that the Fulani herdsman has been weaponized and turned into an, to a tool of insurgency. And it has those ethnic uh, overtones, which you know, is clearly overshadowing a very viable business that we need to talk about. And I think, as Pastor Bakari said, the government needs to live up to his responsibilities because it has now become a national security issue, and they need to address that. Um, so once that has been addressed, you've come up with a, a, a transformation program. It's fine. I mean, this business that we're saying is viable. Um, it's a billion-dollar industry. It has potential. We have so many unemployed people. So once you resolve the security issues, then you can face that business and understand that it is not possible to have a ranch in every state because you do not have the, it's called, there are factors that affect location of industry. This is basic economics 101. Um, and then as Rufai alluded to earlier, you need to move this to Mambela Plateau, you need to move it to Obudu, and go to Fashola, their existing um, grazing reserves in the southwest. So any activity in that regards must be done in that area because we have a lot of cash crops and we need to protect the cash crops. And that is why Governor Akere Dolu was trying to protect his forest reserves because that forest reserves is for timber and the industry of the sawmills. And that takes about 10 years for it to uh, generate. So the, 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 limber, uh, the, the, the logs and the, that we're cutting now, the trees we're felling for, for, for timber and wood now, what, well, is log that was planted three, four generations ago. So we have to start planting for the next generation. So that is why you see these forest reserves have to be closed for extended period of time, and you cannot use them for, uh, for, for cattle uh, grazing. So there is the potential, and I think that if we refocus and we put the right regulation into play, then the transformation, the cattle transformation plan of the government can come to fruition. There's funds available from the central bank, intervention funds at very good rates. And if you put the right structures in place, you will find investments that will go into this uh, business. I, I, and I, I hate to go back, but again to infrastructure, because I'm thinking for us to move from nomadic to modern, the biggest sticky point I see here is power, electricity. Uh, how do we solve that, or is it not a sticky point for you? It is, definitely. And uh, one of the reasons why you say that is the fact that in any modern uh, cattle value chain, the key thing is that you need to maintain the cold chain, and that involves a significant amount of refrigeration, um, and with refrigeration, you require power. Uh, so that, while that might be a constraint, I think that uh, in Nigeria, we've learned to um, develop alternative sources of power. But like you said, I think the key, now that I think we, we had an announcement last week, positive news that uh, the railway line, the Lagos Ibadan railway line has now finally been connected to the Apapa port, which is great news. But don't forget that, you know, in, 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 as far as the 70s, that used to be the case. So the infrastructure challenge is something that we always have to overcome. Right now, as you are saying, there are two large cattle markets in the north, Miadua and uh, Potaskum, one in Katina State by the Niger border and the other in Yobe State. From those two cattle markets, right now you find trailers, they're trucking cattle directly into the southwest. So instead of using trains, now we're using trucks. So those are the sort of inefficiencies you're beginning to see in that system uh, and the infrastructure challenge. But definitely within this cold chain, 
It's the coaching is very critical to the livestock transformation agenda, and there needs to be refrigeration. I know we need to run quickly, but if you can answer this in less than a minute, we are not talking about the milk value chain. We still spend about 500 billion naira to import milk in this country, and we have cattle everywhere. It's 1.2 billion that we used to import milk. Mm. So what we're trying to say is that with the, with the cattle value chain, you're not only talking about the beef, you're talking about dairy, but you're also talking about hides and skins. Uh, we have tanneries in Kano that export to uh, European designers. Uh, so the value of this industry is close to about $10 billion, if you, if you look at it. Uh, so it's, that's why I'm saying that it is something that we need to look at very carefully, not only for the beef, but also for the, uh, for the dairy and also for the heights and skins. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tilewa Adebajo, for joining us on The Morning Show.